Shokri, it's really lovely to talk to you for She Can today. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Well, Stephanie, first I wanted to say thank you so much for having me. And I love all the beautiful things you guys are doing to, to care for women. Wow, that, I love that. You know, I really love that. Um, I wish I had known your organization earlier because you know, I would have reached you out because I love all the things you guys are doing. Yeah. Um, what, um, if you could repeat the question, what was it? Tell us a little about yourself and what you, what you do, Shogri. So uh, if I'm being honest, I'm actually a nurse first, uh, but what I'm doing right now is telling stories. So I'm an author, I'm, being, I'm a first time author. I, I wrote the book, um, as you know, The Last Nomad, um, coming of age, age from Somali desert. Uh, this is my first book and it's a memoir. So um, that's really um, who I am in general is, is, is I am a mother, I am, you know, a wife, I am everything. I'm an author, a nurse, and all that encompasses me. Yeah. Which is and, amazing, uh, which I think you have in common with so many other women, Shobri. We have so absolutely. many different roles and they're all equally important. So thank it really you for all, sharing that. They are all tagging at you, whether you like it or not. You know, uh, we women us have so much powers, right? Superpowers. Look what we do every day and don't complain. Yeah. Shogri, tell us how you got to where you are today publishing your first autobiography. Uh, uh, to be honest, Stephanie, it was a long journey. It took me six years to uh, write this book and to get it published. So um, I often tell people, people said, can you hook me up with your publisher? Can you? I, I always tell them, write the book. You know, I literally, Stephanie, focus on writing. You need to focus on one thing and see you can at least have the discipline to do that, right? And so it was really quite a process. So initially, you know, I I finished my nursing and I was just, I, I was always writing something, you know, a little blurb about nature, about things, and I'll put it on Facebook and people will say, wow, you have a beautiful way of, of painting words, you know, bringing pictures to life, you know. And, you know, we women, it takes us time to lean into that power. So then I started, you know, just focusing, writing and getting onto it. Um, and then when four years into it or three years and a half into it is when I start really um, seeking uh, agent. You need to seek agent first. And the, the, honestly, it feels so cumbersome and hard, but like I get, again, that discipline that you had it writing the book is gonna keep you and that belief that you can do it. So I just honestly stay with it and I get my beautiful and amazing agent. It's just a woman for me. And speaking of women, Stephanie, this is everyone who helped me. I just, the village of women, including my good friend who sat with me and edited as I write, we go through and edit it together. So it wasn't like someone editing, it's more like, hey, we're editing together, right? I was involved with every process of my book, you know, and um, yeah, and publishers. And um, a lot of people say, what makes you think? They assume that I could not quite get it, you know, but that you have to believe in yourself, you know, and I stay with it and what you you know, what you see is what, what come out is this beautiful book and, you know, Recently, a friend um, took a picture. She was in San Diego and she found my book on the bookstore. And this, uh, you know, moment that touches me. So I love when my people, yeah. people find my book and send me uh, pictures or something in, in random bookstores, you know, that's, that's really beautiful. Shogri, I love that. What a nice thing. Shogri, show Thanks. us your book. Tell us about the title. Tell us The Last Nomad. Shogri Saitsal, tell us about your story. Shogri, without giving away too much, tell us a little about your story. You know, thank you so much, Stephanie, for asking. My story is even really unique for the Somali culture even. I am a daughter of a desert, desert mother. My mom, you know, my mom is 
family or my mother stem from a people who were in search and ceaseless end for grazing land and water, right? That is like the, the survival of the fittest. That is the world my mother come from. On the other hand, my father was a teacher. He lived in the city and he actually believed that his daughters should get an education, you know, and but my my young mother who was 15 when she married my 40 year old father and i see how now that looks kind of unfair but th these were the people of their time so i just that's how I, how i look at it and you know i was born as their fo they fought over my destiny because my mother really felt if she wasn't in the desert full time she has to give um her mother a help you know and basically meant somebody was going to be sacrificed to the desert. And I was that daughter who was given as a gift of labor to my nomadic grandmother. And so this book is all of the myriads of, of turns and twists that took place, you know, being, um, going, you know, you know, my, my grandmother was the woman of the desert. So she was very resilient. And I really feel like the resilient I took from this poetic grandmother of mine is really what helped me go through female circumcision, you know, uh, being like orphan, you know, um, Somali civil war. And all of the things I was looking at the other day, I was talking to my daughter, I was telling her, I don't know if there are women who goes through this world that haven't been violated in some way, you know, whether this inappropriate cousins who try to kiss you or a boss who tried to be inappropriate. And, and even me, I feel like I escaped, you know, um, you know, uh, not as bad as a lot of women, but still, you know, and, and I'm glad that all women can read this book and relate it. There is a, uh, almost a rape. Uh, I almost get raped. I, there's so much thing that really, there's a first time love and heartache. So, you know, when you think of my story, you can say, oh my God, it is a story of like, I don't want to read because maybe some people, you know, it's hard, but honestly, this story just from one month, Money described, and many of my honestly friends and family told me, Shukri, my goodness, I knew you were writing a book, but this one, Shukri, I I just want to savor it. It was didn't want to put it down, and that really warmed my heart, Stephanie. That really warmed my heart. I I get it. How lovely is that, Shukri? Oh. You live in the states now. Tell us a little your journey to 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 end up in the states. You know, oh my God, Stephanie, it's a long journey. And right now it's a very uh, tough time for me because of what Afghanistan is going through because I'm actually getting triggered. You know, I find myself really in honesty, if I'm being honest, you having a nightmare, yeah. right? Because yeah. my journey, other than the desert, my second, in my uh, journey that really fleeing me to here, into this country, Western country, started with terror. It started with civil war, it started yeah. with me running like a bird whose nest was burned. I run for my life and I haven't yet go back to Somalia. Um, and it started me ending up um, in the borders of Kenya after a long journey that included getting attacked by lion along the way. Um, I was uh, stuck in the uh, refugee border um, as, a, as a refugee in the borders of Kenya. Um, that led to me coming to the capital of Kenya. I can, then I finally arrived in Canada, the dead of the winter as a newcomer, a refugee. And um, then I met my Ethiopian husband, you know, uh, Eritrean and both Ethiopian. You know, let's talk about somebody who broke, uh, <laughs> broke the shackles of her, uh, you know, uh, ancestors of, or, or, or Mary, you know, Mary Ethiopian and Somalis have always have a little issue, you know, more like enemies. Yeah, sometimes. I know it, I don't I believe. Know it well. You know what I mean? But I am the daughter who say I am going to find comfort in the in the hands of the enemy. So I picked my 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 man and he's wonderful and he's a software engineer and we moved here as a young couple. You know, I think I was 22 or 23 when we moved here uh, with my two year old daughter and started a life in Sonoma County and I love living among the hippies, you know, uh, you know, if I have to tell you my hippie friends, uh, 
really funny. You know, I often have to remind them I'm not eating that placenta. You know, I'm not going to do that crazy things you guys do, <laughs> but I'm going to love you, you know, and, um, you know, it, it's a crazy thing. It, the book ends almost with, um, with a huge misunderstanding about a hippie woman and I when I was petting her goats. I don't know if you read the whole book, but and and I was telling me telling her, you know, baby goats are delicious. And she looks at me dead in the eyes. She's like, that's what we're saving them from. And I totally missed the, the sign that says Go, goats are pets, not dinner. Stephanie. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just a disaster, you know, but but you know, I love where I live. I love hiking. I love getting together with friends. I am one of those people pre-pandemic who cooks for huge friends and um, and gather and loves telling stories. And you know, I make it happen. I actually um, often would uh, gather even for a tea. You know, I'm that friend who said, "Okay, let's go for a tea today," and sit down and just got lost in another woman's gaze or just her world. And I love, I think we women, Stephanie, need to hear each of the sto story. That is the biggest empowerment. Stephanie. I think That's so. the biggest empowerment. Yeah, I think biggest. so. Yes. Um, Shogri, what motivates you? What motivated you to write the book? Um, you know, this is an unusual story of mine Stephanie and no one can write a story for you people say you can even hire a ghost and no one can write your story you walked it and felt it and you know you know everything about your story so I really what motivates me is I only, only knew I am the only one who can paint my world for you. As Money described, uh, if I felt like your words paint a picture, they often say. And so I really knew I have to, what motivates me is, you know, I just knew no one is gonna tell this story of mine. And as a woman, we have to share stories. And so I just impark it and it, whether it's not easy, it is really hard. I just knew I have to stay on it. And, you know, I love st storytelling. So that always nudges me along. But also, Stephanie, um, I am a woman who lost her mother at such a young age. And knowing what is how much, what it means to be a mother. Mothers are amazing, you know, we are a givers. We are, you know, we are the lovers of our children, lovers of our community. We really are the altruistic being of society. We are very, altru you know, altruism is, is the fabric woven of who we are as women. So I know so many women who are doing so many amazing things. So I really knew I have to, it more, so I was motivated bringing my mother's story to life you know and so in the end when especially when I learned that she's not no one even took her picture that really bothered me and I thought perhaps I could bring uh, her story to life so those are the things that motivated me and also knowing that you know that that thing that says Stephanie it, it says an old African proverb says, when an elder dies, is a, a library is burned. You know, I'm not an elder yet. I, I'm getting there, Stephanie, as you can see. But um, but I really felt like I didn't want the wisdoms and all that I had from the desert and all the other things. I didn't want it to die with me. And I want these stories of of this matriotic woman to, to live forever. And that's what I did for them. Amazing. Shukri, thank you. That's so inspirational. Shukri, what is thank your you. superpower? How how do you think you got so good at telling stories? You know, my honestly superpower may not be as cool as a lot of superpower. I think my, and I am hesitant always to say a superpower, but if I can say something, it would be really curiosity. I am innately curious about other people. I can't just, I'm looking at you and I'm thinking, what is Stephanie's story? I want to sit with her and have a tea with her. How far does she live from me? That innate curiosity is really the reason I was able to tell this story. 
couple with my um, story, I come from a long line of, of poets, people of riddles, people, the storytellers, and I grew up listening to poem, poetry and um, uh, riddles and, you know, stories were as a child told and painted for me, right? And so when you are curious, child, this was not just a story to you. You listen, you imagine, and you lived in it. And today I felt as an adult, that is exactly what come back to life, coming from um, people of uh, oral storytellers is, is really, and really in the end, that is what I lean on it, you know, and I, like I said, I'm a nurse. I rather start a difficult IV than I write an essay. But by the end of the day, Stephanie, it's really, um, you have to lean into that. So that curiosity. Another thing I often um, tell women is, I, I wonder about this. You know, there is so many women in this world who, women are always cooking food, right? We're cooking, we're doing all of this. Do you know most famous people are just male chef, uh, chefs? Do you ever wonder yeah. that when more of us cooking in the kitchen and doing because women do so many amazing things and they just oh that, that's not a big deal even if they are amazing cook because that is what the society makes us feel our value who we are so many amazing women it takes them time to walk into that power that is why some women it, it takes us even later i'm not saying for me but it's true for a lot of women too did you even divorce happen when women say that's it i'm not gonna put up with this crazy man i'm i'm really i'm done and that happens usually in late 30s and 40s when women finally learn to walk into their power so i tell them often that analogy do you ever wonder how many, there is so many women of us who are in the kitchen cooking and, you know, the, all the famous uh, um, people, uh, chefs are, chefs are men. That should clue you that we are so amazing, but we just don't believe in that. We don't walk into our power. So if I can tell people, I can tell them, women, all this woman is to walk into your power. You are more amazing than you think. There is so many Absolutely. you just need to believe in. Yeah, yeah. You you need to step out of your ego and fear and into your power. And that's ultimately our journey, isn't it? That, that's our Lovely. journey. Thank you for sharing that. It's very special. What would your top tips be for other women? Uh, you know, honestly, we echo all of those things as we were talking, Stephanie, and and thank you so much. You really interfered so well and so easy, and so I appreciate that about you. Um, honestly, it is it, it always coming back into learning to walk into your power, right? Uh, learning to believe in yourself, learning to be curious, you know, um, and not to take things personally, learning to accept help right and and know that there are people who like for example if i was very good at storytelling and and and, uh, and other things maybe there were women who were willing to edit and read for me sometimes when i was like i said was lost into my story i may not see mistakes i was making it was okay to give it to another woman who's my soul sisters who have other village of women to, and to say what do you think do those kind of thing you know believe into your power walk into that power and don't give up you know really don't give up so many of us when two or three people discourages us we give up when i was writing this book um stephanie i was a very open book about all the pains and <laughs> i mean I, there was a time stephanie when i was writing a chapter about orphanage that i literally come undone my family found me sitting in my california bed you know <laughs> surrounded with books you know typing away <laughs> crying <laughs> oh, you know just and you know probably no one would have think this would come out you know with all the things i've done but it was cathartic i need to unearth all this feeling i need to heal i need to be honest to myself i need to believe so even with that, even with that, I actually finished it. And the beauty of it is 
my nightmare, which used to be untamable, who had this huge grip of me after writing this book become something that I can, I have power over it. It no longer control me. Oh, yeah. So Korea. <laughs> Thank you. It's so inspirational. Thank you for sharing that. It's right. very important to hear this, I think. Shukri, what are your dreams? Where do you see yourself in the future? Are there more book writing on the horizon? What, what is it that you dream about for your future? Stephanie, thank you so much. That's a beautiful question. It's funny, Stephanie, last night I was thinking, yeah, I'm writing, um, I'm doing money project, but I, what brought this answer last night was I'm working on a picture book for a young children, you know, and, and I was thinking, oh my God, I planned, my plan was initially, if I'm being honest, just to write this memoir and I'm done. But then I realized there's so many untold story of my people. And I thought, this you will like it, Stephanie, because it is what really nudging me now is the story of women too, right? I realize that I want to empower young girls. So yeah, the characters I am writing, uh, um, encouraging this, this brave young girl who's a nomadic, who's facing on her, this, the, the young picture book I'm writing, who's learning to face her, um, uh, place the desert, right? The desert is a place that's filled with lions and hyenas. And this fierce young girl is going on her journey of her first uh, animal herding. And she has to face all of this. What I'm saying is this, I want to tell this story to the young girls even. And then I have a middle grade book that I'm also working on it. And then there are more stories coming from um, that adult story. My agent is just pulling me into all a spectrum of storytelling, telling to the picture book, tell to middle grade, tell to adults. So um, I'm really excited that I am able to tell all of this story. And now I realize that there is a competition between my storytelling side who wants to tell all of this story and my nurturing side, which is a nurse who wants to heal person who loves starting that difficult IVs, who enjoys human being, you know, just being with sick patients and bringing them to love and, you know, care and, you know, and, and just the connection I have with my patients and and I'm thinking how could I have both world and and perhaps I am always going to be a nurse but I know now that I really have to impart this journey of storytelling and the story of women and I'm very very excited um if I there's this um you know there's a story that I'm really um I've, I've written a little bit of this story, maybe about 80 page. Um, um, and it, it is just what become of us as a Somali woman after the female circumcision. It is easy to say after we went through that, this woman are done, but I'm actually trying to debunk, debunk that. And there are women I interview, I interview this woman, but the book will be a novel at the end of the day. And it is talking about all these women who are married to white men, some are married to European men, some are married to African-American guys, you know. All of this story, this is the clan East African woman who went to female circumcision, marrying all kind of um, diverse men and, and, you know, entering that with whether they are damaged or not, learning to walk into their own sexual power, you know, so... I'm curious about that. And it's my innate curiosity that's leading to go into this side of the storytelling again. Yeah. Very important stories to be told. Shukri, thank you so much for talking to us today. It's been really inspirational and we're super excited to hold your space and see what's coming next. Thank you really so, so much. And honestly, I'm, I'm really, I tell people, try to, get the book, try to really listen even the audio, just to read one or two pages. And I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed. I wanted this book, Stephanie, to reach everyone, honestly, because it's not like for money, but more like I want you to be empowered. 
by what is, you know, it will, in, it will help you even walk into your own power. And the Somalis have a long tradition of writing and poetry. So everyone get, get to Greece book. Thank you. We are a nation of poets, you yeah. know. Thank you so much. Uh, it's you, just it's been a pleasure. And I'm saying hi to every all, all you women and men and whoever is out there that is watching us. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you, Stephanie. You